Hey everybody, how are y'all doing? I hope y'all doing great. Today, we are gonna be talking about how to make a trailer Peter McKinnon style. A few months ago, Peter McKinnon released a trailer for his upcoming film called The Bucket Shot. And if you haven't seen it, you really should because it is a great trailer. Um, in fact, I mean, it's so short, it's like 28 seconds. Let's just play it right now. So here it is. Uh, if I don't get this shot, I'm gonna rage. <laughs> We're literally flying across the country to take one photo. It's all snow covered and it's foggy like that. It's a Stephen King movie. You still lose. You can see the water and the mountains. It is raining pretty hard right now. There should be snow up top. Look, you can't even see the mountain. You can't drive up here? Just because it's too dangerous. I still can't even believe it, it worked. I really like Peter because he puts out content constantly, always putting out awesome videos, but also because he's a very positive and just a very humble person in general. Let's break down this trailer and figure out why it is so effective. So the first five seconds of the trailer really make or break any trailer. If you cannot hook your audience in the first five seconds of a trailer, then it's not really doing its job. The goal of the trailer, it has to be to just get people interested enough in your movie to keep watching the trailer. And then if the trailer's good, then hopefully you got people interested to watch your movie. But it all starts with that first five seconds. Those are really, really crucial. Uh, if I don't get this shot, I'm gonna rage. <laughs> so this trailer starts with a very strong hook. And the hook of this film is what is this shot? What shot is worth raging for? As photographers, we take pictures every day, but here you are telling me there's one shot that if you don't get it, you're gonna rage over it. And that is the crux of the whole movie. There is a an obstacle that's gonna get in my way from achieving this shot. Will I be able to overcome it? And that is the crux of any story. It starts with a, a hero, a conflict, and will they be able to overcome that conflict to get what they want? So within the first five seconds, we are introduced to the hero of the story, which is himself, and the goal that he wants to achieve. He wants to get this shot. We're literally flying across the country to take one photo. From seconds five to 10, it's more about giving us context around who he is, what he's doing. He's obviously gonna, he's on a plane, he's gonna go somewhere foreign, somewhere we don't know. And this adds another bit of interest. Hey, this guy's going somewhere that he doesn't know. It's not like he's gonna go into his backyard and try to get it. This is a shot that's gonna require travel, it's gonna require effort, it's gonna require planning. Um, and all this again is leading up to the question of will I be able to get it? So here's where it gets interesting. At 10 second mark, we get our first real conflict. It's all snow covered and it's foggy like that. It's a Stephen King movie. You still lose. The conflict is he's trying to get a picture, but it's snowing and there's fog everywhere and you just can't seem to get it. And that right there is just a lesson. Your teasers and your trailers have to be littered with conflict. It can't just be your journey doing something. You have to show you know, your journey as a hero going through this process, go, showing all the obstacles that you're gonna face on the path and on the way to where you're gonna go. You can see the water and the mountains. So the shot needs to have water in the mountains. So the film's purpose is becoming clear. My purpose, my journey, my goal is to get a shot with the water and the mountains together. That's what I wanna do. And, you know, all that within the first 15 seconds, you're getting a very clear idea of where he wants to go, what he wants to do. It is raining pretty hard right now. Should be snow up top. At second 18, he says, it's raining pretty hard right now. Another conflict. Not only is it wet and cloudy, but it's also raining. Look, you can't even see the mountain. At 22, it's I can't see the mountain. So he's trying to do things and I can't see the mountain. You can't drive up here? Just because it's too dangerous. At 24, it's can I drive up here? No, it's too dangerous. So not even, he can't even get to the place that he wants to go to because it's too dangerous. So basically everything he's said so far has been a problem or a conflict or an issue that he has to overcome. And that's the key. That makes us interested in wanting to go on this journey with him and seeing if he's gonna be able to actually overcome all these obstacles. And then at second 26, the music stops and he says, I still can't even believe it, it worked. I can't believe it worked. And there you go. We have the entire film basically in a 20, in a third, 28 second capsule. Problem? Obstacle, 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 obstacle. 
boom, solution. He did it. I really think this trailer is really effective and it really was a prime example of how to make a trailer for anything, for any web series, for any video series, for any film. Um, the three main takeaways are, number one, litter your trailer with conflict. Litter it with obstacles. Make the audience want to go on the journey with you to see if you're going to succeed or not. The second thing is the trailer is very fast paced. So again, it's going to, depending on your film, you're going to want to tailor the trailer to your film and what your subject is. But in this case, the music is very fast paced. The cuts are extremely fast. There aren't that many words, but the words that were chosen were very selectively chosen to add conflict. But in general, it's very fast paced and it makes us want to race to see what this thing is. And the last thing is the film looks like it all has a certain feel to it. It was obviously all shot with the same camera, same settings, kind of everywhere. And that kind of, you know, it just adds a little bit of, it just makes the film feel more unanimous, feel more complete when it all kind of looks the same. Um, you don't want your trailer being all over the place in terms of style, in terms of color. You want to kind of keep it exactly where it is. So yeah, that's it. That's my little breakdown for Peter McKinnon's trailer. I am definitely interested in the movie. And um, yeah, I look forward to making more content on this YouTube channel about, you know, video related and photography related things. So if you like the video, please subscribe. I'm going to make more video and photo related content a lot in the next year. So hopefully I'll see you next year. Peace.